LinkedIn algorithm change has done nothing but benefit me. Because when you produce good content, people, the algorithm is going to show it to the people that want to see it. It's really interesting as I watch people that directly plagiarize my information oftentimes on a daily basis. I would go into LinkedIn and I would post a video with text and then I would wake up the next morning and there'd be someone in the UK that would post the same thing. And then you watch that and then I, call, I called them out and then you watch it happen two or three more times and you block that person. There's another person in Germany that takes my content and translates it into German and posts the exact same thing. However, word for word, word for word, and the and which is a core reason why I've gone to video is because you can't fake it. You can't copy it. And so um, it's been it, very few people have made this step into video, but as I've watched and I've not only watched people plagiarize me, but I've interacted with people that sound smart in their posts and then you have the 30 minute conversation with them and they don't know what they're talking about. And there's a lot of people like that too. You know, the, the VP of growth that doesn't know any more than a marketing specialist. A lot of people have that in their headline and don't actually know what they're talking about. And so when I get back to it, it's just, it comes down to the using, using video has been a really strong way to communicate expertise, which then has allowed more people to discover and trust me. It's 100% market research. It's, it's business development and market research in concert, like moving together. And so like I put out, I put out a post the other day, um, which gave me a ton of good insights when I said it's a dumb, it's a bad strategy to outsource your content to an agency. And I explained why. And then I got the comments that came back, a lot of them from agencies that create content that it's clear that they have a biased view on this, but also some good educated content or comments about the fact that I need to explain that you can't outsource the original thought. It's very, it's very, it, I can out, once we record this, I can outsource the rest. I can outsource the person that cuts up the videos and I can outsource the person that writes the blog post about it and I can have someone put it up on a podcast. But the original thought, what I say here, somebody else cannot create for me and somebody else should not be able to create that for internal SMEs and companies, but companies, even large companies, hundred million dollar companies do not feel the need to create content in-house so they outsource it to some agency that's supposed to be verticalized that doesn't actually that doesn't have leading thoughts and they have them do thought leadership and they're also doing it for six other companies so it just six other companies in the space so all the thoughts become the same and it the root cause is that executives don't understand how much content marketing drives businesses because they've never seen it they've never seen it work and so the fact that you don't believe in it enough to build it in-house is the core problem. Let's pretend that you are the medical device company that's selling to neonatologists. You probably either have a PhD or an MD on staff that is the subject matter expert in your company. If you are a company that's selling to CFOs, you definitely have a CFO. But their time, like we go back to the same thing. Why isn't the CFO not on four podcasts a week? And why aren't they the leader in the thought, given that they are the expert in what you're selling and also very well educated on the position of your company?